Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Reaper Minis TV. To start off this episode, we have several new Savage Worlds releases that we're going to get into, and then a couple other things that I think would work in Savage Worlds. All of these figures are single-piece castings, and we're starting off with a Huckster. And you can see in both hands he has cards that are fanned out that he's going to use either in a card game or to somehow charge up with magical power and sling at somebody. You can see some mold lines on the figure itself and some bits of extra metal that'll need to be cleaned up. And this is typical of all five Savage Worlds releases we're going to look at this episode. There's a minimal amount of cleaning necessary, but you do have to spend a little bit of time and attention on each one of them. He's got a vest on with a frilly shirt. His gun is still at his side. So it very much reminds me of a Brett Maverick type character like the Mel Gibson movie and the TV show before that. So he should fit into that type of role just fine. Next up is a Texas Ranger, and that's close to my heart because I'm from Texas, so good job here. We've got a guy carrying a sawn-off shotgun, and he's wearing a duster and a big hat. Um, problem I did have, not really with the miniature, but when I got the miniature, was the shotgun or the barrel of the shotgun seems very prone to bending in the package, and that could lead to it being broken when you get it or broken soon after you get it. So just be careful about that. Make sure when you're checking one of these out in the game store, you've got one that's not bent so you don't even have to worry about it. Extra detailing on the figure itself includes his belt buckle that has a little bit, it looks like filigree, that's detailed into the belt buckle. I don't know that there's anything specific there, but it does have a little bit of extra etching into it. You can see his badge on his vest from underneath his duster. He's got a mustache and the face and the hair that you can see under the hat is very well done. So really good details here on this figure. Just be wary of the shotgun when you pick up the blister. This next guy is billed as being a gunslinger, and you can see he's in a very action-oriented pose. He looks like he's just thrown aside his duster to draw a gun and fire it in a gunfight. He has two pistols in holsters, actually two holsters. One's got a pistol in it, the other he's just drawn out and presumably fired. Details on this figure are all really well done, from the buttons on his vest to his belt to the straps on his holsters that tie around his legs. Everything is just really crisp and clean, and he should do just fine as a player character figure. This next guy is a U.S. agent, and with this figure, we start getting into some of the more technologically advanced weaponry and gear for the Deadlands setting. He's wearing a duster and a hat, similar to the Texas Ranger that we saw, but in his left hand, he's carrying a multi-barreled pistol. So it looks to me, or what I would call it, is sort of like a Gatling pistol. Maybe that's what it's called, maybe it's not. But it does look pretty darn cool. It has multiple barrels that are on a normal pistol frame, and he's holding it up more in a threatening manner than firing it. At least that's what it looks like right now. You can't see his badge underneath his duster like you could with the Texas Ranger, but there is a tiny bit of chain that's on his vest that it looks like it's leading down into a pocket that either had maybe attached to his badge or to a pocket watch or something like that. So there's a nice added bit of detail there. And this is another guy that I think would make a good player character model. Even if you're not going to use him as a government agent, he would be a guy with a pretty cool gun to use as a player character. Now this last girl that we're going to take a look at, or last figure, it happens to be a girl, is a female mad scientist, and it definitely ramps up the technological aspect of the setting, at least a little more so than the figures we've seen so far. Looks like she's carrying some sort of ray gun or something that has a power pack to it, because you've got some leads or cords that are coming down to her belt, and it also appears that she's got a bionic left arm. Her dress maybe looks a little more Victorian than Wild West, or maybe they're close enough to where that doesn't matter, but it definitely looks a little step up in technology and in status than your regular cowboy kind of guys. Like with the other four figures that we've seen so far in this episode, quality, crispness, detail are all very good. Might need a little bit of time spent on cleaning the figure like the other ones, and she does have a little bit of a more steampunk feel to her than the cowboys that we have just got done looking at. She'd still fit into the Weird West setting, but you might also get some crossover use in a more Victorian flavored kind of game also. And here's a look at three other new Savage Worlds releases that are going to be coming out soon.
Okay, and I said that there were two other figures that I think would work well in a Savage Worlds, or Deadlands in this case, game. And here they are, they're from the Chronoscope line. This first one is Victoria Jacobs, and she's a cowgirl, a rather well-endowed cowgirl, and that probably aids her in shooting others in a gunfight, because they're probably going to be a little bit distracted. But, but anyway, we've got a two-piece figure here, and the bulk of the figure comes just on its own. The second piece is her hat, and that's going to be cast as part of the sprue down by her foot, so you'll clip that off and need to clean it up before you attach it. In general, the figure didn't need as much cleaning as the previous Savage Worlds figures that we looked at, but there was a little bit of damage to her hat. On the front end of the, the right side of the front end of the hat, there was a little bit of metal missing there. Now, normally having a bit of metal missing from a figure might be, well, not just might be, probably is going to be pretty significant and going to be a problem. For this, okay, it, it's got a, a mold defect, I guess you could say, on the figure, but it's really not that big of a deal because it adds, at least for me anyway, a little bit of character to the model. She's got a part of her hat that's been burned away, shot away, torn away, whatever. It does add a little bit of character to the model. Now, I'm not advocating for damaged models, but in this case, it's really not that big of a deal. This next figure is Dita. She's a steampunk witch, and this one might be a little more of a stretch to fit into a Deadlands campaign, but I figure if you have that mad scientist who's got a ray gun and a bionic arm, this really isn't as much of a stretch as you might normally think. Dita is a single piece figure. She's carrying a mechanical or steampunkish kind of broom that has bristles on the end like a normal broom, but if you wanted to, you could cut the bristles off and just make it a some kind of technological staff that she's carrying. She has the stereotypical pointed witch's hat but a very frilly kind of dress on, almost Victorian in appearance, which fits in with the steampunk theme. And the last figure for this episode really has nothing to do with the Wild West, Weird West, or steampunk in any way that I can figure. It's a leprechaun that is sitting on a giant owl. It's a single piece figure here. And here you can see a picture of the painted version of the model. And our little leprechaun's wearing an impressive tricorn hat. He's got a pipe in his mouth. He's carrying a jug of some kind of ale or alcohol or something in his right hand, and he looks like a, a happy, go-lucky, pleasant little leprechaun here. I'm not sure exactly how else to describe him for you, but all of the sculpting is really well done. The owl looks good, the leprechaun looks good, needed a minimum amount of cleaning, so not long before he's going to be primed and ready to paint. Um, I'm not really sure that I've ever seen or used a leprechaun in a fantasy role-playing game, so Having a figure like this might just give you an excuse to have maybe a less serious encounter where you have a lot more role-playing potential and get away from your normal hack and slash if that's what your games normally get into. But good figure here. I think a DM with a creative use for it or a, a very creative encounter could do well with this figure. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. And next time, I promise you'll see footage of that elusive or so far elusive Warriors of Chaos Army that I'm building using all Reaper miniatures. So be on the lookout for that.